All right, now the second type of bunion procedure is a minimally invasive bunion surgery. So, what to expect before surgery? You still have to get all that preoperative clearance. We have to make sure a medical doctor says you're healthy enough for surgery. And with any surgery that you do, with any immobilization, there's a risk for a blood clot. And so we wanna make sure that you're moving your leg up and down, you're moving your knee, and if anyone at any time was to experience any calf pain, you wanna make sure you either call our office or go to the emergency room because those risks are serious and they can lead to what's called a pulmonary embolism and that can be life-threatening. So always move around. Make sure you're moving your ankle, make sure you're moving your leg. The next surgery is called a minimally invasive bunion. Now, what does this look like? Here is an x-ray showing a preoperative image, showing an image about six weeks after surgery, and then the next image months after surgery. Essentially what we're doing here is we're cutting this bone, we're sliding it over through a very small incision, and we're applying screws across here. This is a before and after of someone who underwent a minimally invasive bunion. So you wake up from surgery, what do you expect? You can expect to have a small incision on the inside of the foot, and you can expect to be in a cast. Most people after this type of surgery will have a splint on, it'll be hard in the back under the foot, and it'll go up behind the calf and that'll be hard and stay in place. I like for patients to keep that on for about seven to 10 days. And I usually will see people back after surgery about seven to 10 days after. The reason we do that is because I like you to start to get moving as soon as possible. Once I see you back and things look good, you can go ahead and start to put weight in a boot. At that point in time, if, it, if the sutures are ready to come out, they will come out. Up until the point where you go into the boot immediately after surgery, you have to keep your foot nice and clean and dry. So that means a shower bag or a cast bag in order to keep the splint nice and clean and dry. After that, you can start to walk, like I said, seven to 10 days out. Once I see you and the x-ray looks good, you can start to walk in a boot. Most people will use one crutch, uh, sometimes a cane in that first kind of three to five days in order to acclimate to putting weight and pressure in a boot. No walking outside of the boot though, because as you can see with this type of a bone cut, uh, there is a transverse or a horizontal type cut. And so if you walk without the boot, that can cause that bone to move up or down in a direction. And that's what we don't want. Most patients will start physical therapy pretty quickly after surgery, usually around the one to two week mark once the swelling looks okay. At that point in time, you'll work on joint range of motion. You'll start to do some exercises and strengthening type things, non-weight bearing with physical therapy. Most people can transition into a normal shoe at about eight weeks after surgery with this minimally invasive type bunion. We'll typically get x-rays immediately after surgery at four weeks and then at eight weeks. Most people can return to physical activity. We're talking running, jumping, um, elliptical, um, you know, any type of aerobic type of uh, dynamic exercises at about three months after surgery. But usually at that eight week mark, when you go back into a shoe, you can do biking, you can do elliptical, you can do things where your feet are planted and you certainly can do some weightlifting. Uh, really the minimally invasive bunion has transformed the way that I do um, uh, this type of osteotomy. It creates a friendly environment for healing, the swelling is very minimal, and the range of motion after surgery is tremendously better than traditional open type bunion procedure. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, good luck with your surgery. Peace.